Let's get some gymnastics underway. It's a great pleasure to have your company for the European Championships. Oli Hockben here as we get the all-around final started. And there is no better place to begin than with the reigning European champion, Lenoy Ashram of Israel, the second strongest in qualification. She starts with a hoop. And we have embarked. That's a mighty beginning to the European Championships and the individual all-around final. Lenoy Ashram won the title at the end of last year in the city of Kiev. It was such a dramatic final as well. I'm sure many of you watched it. She has been successful at the World Cup events, the four Olympic qualification World Cup events, but because Israel already has secured two places at the Games, she does not need to be in the mix for Olympic qualification here. And it would be something of a surprise if they didn't select her as part of their squad of two. Super catch into the rotation of the apparatus across the elbow and round the neck. Very fluid work. Almost the double catch here. Catch into a quick throw and regrass. Builds a lot of difficulty. Well, we'll come back to the score for Lenoy Ashram in a moment. We look now at Ekaterina Vedenieva of Slovenia. 13th strongest performer in qualification. Lovely classical gymnast. At 26, 
She is a gymnast who really is in the form of her life and has performed so fantastically throughout the World Cups to guarantee a berth at the Olympic Games. The Slovenian athlete come back to her in just a moment as we wait on the score for Israel's Linoy Ashram. This is the first number to come in of the day. Very nice pirouettes in the uh, attitude position, the classical attitude with the uh, leg extended to the back. There are three different attitude positions. Super toe point in her balance work. That's the side attitude, which we'll talk more about later. Those of you who are fans of ballet will know many of the terms that are being used. Now, Lenoy Ashram's score was 27.45, so she's up by a tenth and a half from qualification. Apologies for the lack of graphics. We'll try to get that rectified as soon as we can. Paulina Berezina of Spain. Gymnast who is going for Olympic qualification. Isn't that just lovely orchestration? Got to love a bit of Irish step dance, haven't you? It's very difficult to combine balletic work with the principles of uh, classical Irish dancing, but uh, Berezina, the 23-year-old, is such a, a well-schooled dancer. Now, for Vadinieva, 24.4. Now, that is a really fine number from her. She's gained over a mark from qualification. We look back at this club's routine of Paulina Berezina. 15th strongest in qualification, third strongest in our nine-person tournament for Olympic qualification. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as well as we go through. <laughs> yeah, I think they were pretty pleased with that one. To someone who is positively a young veteran of the sport at 23, Salome Peshava of Georgia. 18th strongest in overall qualification. Again, part of the qualification tournament here. The fifth best performer of those nine gymnasts. European Games medalist with the ribbon in Azerbaijan in 2015.
You know, rhythmic gymnastics needs Salome Bashava. She is such an expressive and creative performer. A lovely athlete who tries to create narrative to everything that she does. She's really had not a great deal of opportunity to perform recently. She is also the vice president of the uh, Georgian Gymnastics Federation. She's involved in the administration of the sport at the highest level. Had a bit of a tangle with the ribbon. Good pattern work here going into the leaps. Nice back bend. Establishing with clarity the fuete turn with good toe point on the kick out. She is at her fifth European Championships, first since the 2018 edition of the competition. So we're waiting for her score, but also the club's score of Paulina Berezina to come in as well. Twenty-four point two for Berezina. She's down by a tenth and a half from qualification. The fifth gymnast to go is the Spanish athlete Natalia Garcia. 26-year-old from Barcelona, 17th strongest in qualification, also part of the <coughs> battle to secure an Olympic place. Very experienced gymnast, made her national team debut in 2008. Her grandmother, Natasha, was a national acrobatic gymnastics champion in the Soviet Union. This is a big step up for Pashava. 21.4 with the ribbon. She has gained almost a mark from qualification. And again, when referring to these qualification positions for the gymnasts who are going for an Olympic spot, we have to bear in mind that they also could discard their weakest routine in qualification, which they cannot do in the final. So far, the trend is a positive one. We're seeing some good scores and good performances. Anastasia Salos of Belarus, third strongest in overall qualification, 26.8 with the ball.
Salos was the bronze medalist in the all-around competition in Kiev at the end of last year. She is a gymnast who has made stark improvements to her work of late. Something that I've talked about a lot during the World Cup events, that she was doing a lot of training in lockdown with technology to improve her reactions, her coordination, a lot of uh, sports science work. It's had a, a real impact on Salos. Did have the odd issue here and there in the routine. There is the most notable one. If you lose and retrieve the apparatus without having to travel, it's around about half a mark that's gone. As you start to take steps to retrieve it, then that can go up by tenths to around a full mark. So we'll have to see what the impact is on... Salos' score. The ball score was her second weakest of the qualification campaign. Now, if you're wondering why they're dressed like that, those individuals, the Naval Academy of Varna is just over the road from this venue. This is the National Naval Academy, named after Nikola Vapsarov, a poet, very renowned poet who studied there in the 1920s. And uh, some of the cadets from the National Naval Academy actually took part in the opening ceremony. It is the third largest city in Bulgaria, Varna, but most known for being the largest seaside resort on the uh, Bulgarian Black Sea coast. Hence its proud naval tradition. But there's no time for naval gazing right now. We've got to uh, get on with the competition. Andrea Verdes of Romania, the 14th strongest in qualification. 20-year-old gymnast is... Well positioned after qualifying in the uh, Olympic place race. Verdes was 10th in the all-around at the European Championships last year, easily her best ever performance. It was a smaller European Championships, but nonetheless it was a fine display from her as we see confirmation of a big score for Garcia, 23.6. That is an improvement of 1.95 from the qualification campaign. Salos... 25.9 for her and she's down by almost a mark from qualifying and we have to bear in mind that she had that retrieval of the apparatus which will account for 
a large part of that 0.9. Now, the gymnast who really excelled in qualification when it comes to Olympic placement is this one here. The 21-year-old reigning Hungarian national champion, Fanny Pignitsky. Tenth best qualifier, the top of all of those gymnasts who are fighting for an Olympic spot. It's a very nice routine, really is well composed, well choreographed. Student of physical education who competed at the World University Games in 2019. Verdes has a score of 25.4, so she has also improved upon her qualification performance by over half a mark, just over half a mark. We really are seeing the gymnasts going for Olympic qualification, delivering some big work. Good control in her balances. Unusual arm position for the attitude pirouette that worked so nicely into the whirlwind out of it. Very stylish gymnastics. 26-year-old, hugely experienced athlete, Ksenia Mustafaeva of France, 22nd strongest in qualification. Oh, what a finish to that routine from Mustafa Really lovely. Five times the national champion. 
journalism and uh, broadcasting undergraduate student in Paris. She's uh, delayed that to continue with her quest for the Olympic Games. Very well controlled scale or balance. Lovely pass across the arm. Wasn't that a super finish in terms of the projection, the performance, as well as the control of the catch? Now, I'll just tell you that the score for Fanny Pignitsky with the ribbon was 22.3. She has gained almost two marks from qualifying. Goodness me, this is, this is quite a day. Now, Margarita Kolosov of Germany, 17-year-old reigning national champion. What a nice addition to the senior ranks is Margarita Kolosov. Now, although Germany has not qualified gymnasts for the uh, Olympic Games, Kolosov is not eligible to be part of the Olympic qualification race because she was a junior. We'll come back to that in a moment. 22.3 for Pignitsky. Big improvement from qualification. Back to Kolosov. She was a junior when the World Championships were held in 2019. 23.35 for Mustafa Fiver. She's gained 0.9 from qualification. Wow, they really are all stepping up at the moment. Now I'm going to try and finish this story about Kolosov. She um, did not participate as a senior at the World Championships in Baku in 2019. Ergo, she is not eligible for Olympic qualification. That's one of the requirements. But a gymnast with lovely high leg positions, her high leg pirouettes and uh, her scale positions really are nice, well established. How lovely it is to see the Ukrainian gymnast Vlada Nikolchenko. We haven't seen a lot of her lately. Still only 18. 16th strongest in qualification.
Ukraine, one of the nations that has secured a couple of Olympic qualification berths already. Yes, nearly. And uh, the reaction makes clear was almost spot on. 23.325 for Kolosov. Increases by four tenths from her qualification performance. Nikolchenko really didn't have the easiest time of things at the last European Championships, but she was a bronze medalist with the clubs in 2019. There was the drop of the apparatus. She did retrieve it quickly, though, and without too much adjustment. To a gymnast who is a relatively new addition to the senior ranks. Baku's own Azu Jalilova, who turned 17 last week. The Kiev European Championships was her senior international debut. 20th strongest in qualification, 20 with the ribbon. A very big display from Azu Jalilova. Very good musician. She's a fine pianist. It's her grandparents, Evaz and Rubaba, who used to take her to training in the early days because her mother was working. Nikol Chenka's score is 23.7. Execution 7.9. She is up from qualification by over a mark. Probably didn't lose a huge amount for the drop of the apparatus as it was a relatively uh, simple regrasp. A look back at Jalilova. Just about made that, didn't she? <laughs> needed a, a second attempt at the catch. The judges obviously will deduct a small amount for it, but didn't need to pick up the apparatus after a drop, which is significant, very significant. And all of that brings us back round to the start. Now, if you're just joining, this is the first half of the all-around competition we have got another group of 12 athletes to come after this. So not all of the top qualifiers are here. This is a, a totally mixed group of gymnasts. It's not a case that we start with those ranked 13 to 24 and then see those ranked 1 to 12. It's mixed in a random draw. And that means from an Olympic qualification standpoint, it's even more tricky because... Three of the gymnasts who are in the Olympic race, Victoria Bogdanova, Rachel Stoyanov and Eleni Kiladiti, they are in the next group. So we really won't know anything until about uh, lunchtime GMT. Don't know what that is for you. 
depending on where you're watching the action from. But it is uh, just coming up to a quarter to eight Greenwich Mean Time. In local time, it's a few hours ahead in Varna, Bulgaria. And we're due to know the state of play around about 12 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time in terms of the uh, European title and also the Olympic qualification places. All of which, when it comes to the Olympics, will be provisional. Nothing will be confirmed immediately. That's uh, a matter of protocol. But we'll certainly be able to give you a good indication of what things seem to be with lots of brackets, asterisks and various other things all of which say don't quote us on this we haven't yet had the score for Jaliliver with a ribbon once that is in then we are ready to re-embark so we're at the quarter mark of the first set of gymnasts the one-eighth mark if you will of the overall competition lots of excitement about the home athletes Katrin Tasseva and uh, Boriana Kalain will be competing in the second group. And the Bulgarian group as well is uh, going to be competing later today. And they really are an impressive act. They were so delighted, weren't they, with uh, Berezina's performance with the clubs? Illinois Ashram starting strongly with the hoop. There's no doubt about it, some terrific gymnasts will not get onto the podium. We do have apparatus finals tomorrow, which provides uh, an opportunity for renewed interest in silverware, but with 24 splendid athletes and three medals up for grabs in the all-around. It's all very compact and very hard to involve yourself in. We have 18 groups as well going for three all-around medals. The groups perform two routines, the single apparatus and the mixed apparatus. Second routine from Israel's Lenoy Ashram. This was her finest piece in qualification, 27.8. She started with 27.45 with the hoop.
It's a statement performance and a statement piece of orchestration and they are happy with the statement that she has made. They are ecstatic with the statement she's made. The song by Alphaville, big in Japan. Is that Lenoy Ashram's destiny? What a controlled roll across the shoulder. Honche turn so stable as you would expect from her. Lovely bit of choreography this as well. She really does burst into the final stages of the routine. The trap behind the back, difficult because it's unsighted. That's how things stand at the moment. Yekaterina Fedenieva competing with club. She scored 24.6 for this routine in qualifying. Some very elegant pirouettes in her work. She was 13th in the all-around competition at the last European Championships. Started the sport because her mother was a coach. Azu Jalilova, 20.7. She gains 0.7 from her performance in qualification. It's an inquiry from a Ukrainian gymnast. That's... Uh, a little bit of European Championship tradition. They are known for their inquiries and uh, Nikolchenka challenging uh, the difficulty score. Lovely attitude pirouette from Vadiniera. Wonderful dancer. Does some particularly nice work with the ribbon, which is her next performance. It's always good to see an elite athlete performing at their best in the latter stages of their career. She was born in Irkutsk in the Russian Federation. Lovely space, the Palace of Culture and Sports in Varna. At full capacity, this, the uh, Kongresna Hall, can seat around about five, 6,000, depending on how they configure it. There are three spaces in the overall building, the Mladost Hall and the Hall 20, smaller spaces.
Paulina Beregina, the next to compete. If it is something of a pressure cooker back there, the gymnasts are handling it marvellously. If you're just joining the competition now, you are being royally entertained. 25.65 from Vodinieva. And she is up by over a mark from qualification. So after two routines, Vodinieva has gained more than two marks from her qualification score. She was the 13th best overall. That is just what she's doing at the moment. Every time we see her, she seems to be a little bit better than last time. Now, who doesn't want that on the mantelpiece? Probably a few of you, but certainly be a talking point, wouldn't it? Talking point so far has been the displays of Paulina Beregina and Natalia Garcia. Spanish fans are very excited by what they've seen. Now, we did mention earlier that there is an inquiry going on. The score of Vlada Nikolchenka. So that is going to uh, just delay the process somewhat. Don't worry, they're not competing next. She is. Right, we'll bring you an update on the scores that we're missing in just a moment. But let us focus our attentions on Paulina Berezina. Establishes the ribbon carefully as she approaches the competition floor because this was an 18.3 in the qualification campaign. This is the routine that Berezina really needs to make sure that she navigates successfully. She started well. The metal, the steel, the determination of these gymnasts. Don't know how your nerves are doing, but I'm in bits. Now, it's 28.3 for Linoy Ashram. 
with the ball. That's an improvement of half a mark from qualification. So she's gained now 0.65 across her first couple of routines. Good controlled, unsighted catch behind the back from Berezina working well in releve. Stable pirouettes. Ashram leads the way so far, long way to go nonetheless. There's a strong start from Salome Peshava. 21 point four with the ribbon, well up from qualification. She scored 23.15 for this in qualifying. This was her best routine. Needs to maintain it. One of the gymnasts who's in an interesting position from a qualification standpoint is Salome Pashava because she could well stand to be the beneficiary of a reallocation place from the last World Championships due to the uh, distribution of Olympic qualification spots there, but she's trying to make sure matters are in her hands. Trying to do things on her terms. She just about navigated her way through that difficult catch. It's always been one of her great strengths, is that pirouette. Competed at the Olympic Games in Rio with a very bad uh, injury. Dreadful inflammation of her feet. She had a pinched nerve. Spain's Natalia Garcia began with a much improved score with the hoop. She was up by over two marks. What can she do with the ball? This was her best work in qualifying.
There's a good case to be made that that is her strongest routine. It certainly was from a score point of view in qualification, 24.7. But it's a very powerful routine in terms of her projection. Oh, that's an improved number from Berezina, 21.55. She's up by over three marks from qualification. For Shava, 23.1. She's down by half a tenth from qualification, but with an overall aggregate increase. Oh, the numbers here, the, the maths of all of this is agonizing. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Only one gymnast is going to make it of the nine, and Garcia is one of the nine. That might be the moment of the routine, that catch behind the back into splits position. Brilliant. Now, meanwhile, we have the quest for the overall podium as well. Anastasia Salos had difficulties with her first routine. 27.2 for this in qualifying. Her second strongest routine of the qualification campaign. Gymnast who had uh, some su success at the World Cups, the four Olympic qualification events, but not uh, from that perspective because Belarus already has secured a couple of qualification spots. Now, Garcia, 24.4. She's down by three tenths from qualification, but she did have a few tenths to spare in that routine. It was her best. Garcia is the top performer so far of our six of the nine that are in this uh, particular set of gymnasts. So she's doing well. What about Andrea Verdes? of Romania with the ribbon. 18.9 for this in qualification. This is another of those routines that is an important one, a vital one to navigate.
You have to feel for Andrea Verdes. You really do. Oh. Oh, goodness. Had to go for the alternative apparatus. 27.15 for Salos. She's down by half a ten from qualification. Polina Berezina submitting an inquiry about her ribbon score. Well, we look back at this routine from the uh, gymnast from Yashi. It's very nice dynamic balance work, lovely extension in the Grand Battement. It was a good start for Fanny Pignitsky with the ribbon, 22.3. She now moves to her hoop routine, 23.9 in qualification. A Hungarian athlete making a bid for the Games. You know, whatever the outcome is for Fanny Pignitsky today, there can be very few gymnasts in the sport that have developed as she has done over the last few years. The improvement in her technique, in her difficulty, has been super. Verdes does improve upon her qualification performance, but only by a mark. It's 19.9. It might be a tricky score to mount a comeback from. Just a single spot available at the Games of the Summer Olympiad for these nine gymnasts that are going for qualification from non-qualifying countries. It's in nations that have not already got a spot. That's well controlled. It was a strong beginning from Francis Ksenia Mustafaeva, gymnast born in Minsk but moved to Paris at the age of six. 22.25 with the ball in qualification. This was her second weakest score.
10th in the all-around competition at the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. Just a lovely gymnast, a stylish performer. So well schooled in classical dance techniques. Such an agonizing time for these athletes. We can only sympathize with such a, a hard day. Missed a lot of time due to injury of late. Strangely, only her second all around final at the European Championships. She's missed a lot of the competitions that have had all around finals. The championships don't always have an all around. We're in the relatively unusual position of having an all-around this year, having had an all-around last year as well. Those are rather nice, aren't they? So far, they're the only one that's looking rattled because the gymnasts are really handling the occasion. Margarita Kolosov is not in the Olympic qualification picture. And that is because she is too new to the senior ranks to be part of that conversation. The gymnasts have to have competed at the last edition of the World Championships at senior level. She's spoken about how much she's aiming for Paris. In 2024. It was a very assured beginning to her campaign. 23.35 with the ball. Margarita Kolosov now takes to the competition floor to perform her club's routine. She scored 22.4 for this in the preliminary round. That's a really striking finishing position to uh, all of her routines. Gymnast 2 trains at the Fellbach Schmieden Federal Training Centre near Stuttgart. Only 17. 24.55 for Pignitsky. She's up by over half a mark from qualification. Mustafaeva, 23.3, is up by just over a mark from qualification the improvement across the board from those gymnasts going for Tokyo qualifying 
It's something special. Vlada Nikolchenko of Ukraine. She started with a 23.7 with the clubs, did have a problem with the apparatus. Didn't perform a ribbon routine in qualification. Whenever you watch Vladimir Nikolchenko, you are always treated to a piece of performance. Gymnast who won her first World Championship medal in Baku in 2019. Kolosov scores 23.3. That for her is a, a good step up from qualification by 0.9. A reminder of the 18 year old Ukrainian's work, always so good at that, the high back leg pirouette. This is the last performance of the second. Rotation. We go back round again in a moment to Lenoy Ashram for the third of four pieces. This is Arzu Jalilova of Azerbaijan. 23.1 for this performance in qualification. It was her second best routine. <laughs> Still very new to senior competition. Junior World Championship dual medalist in Moscow in 2019. Participated in all of the four World Cup events. She's 
Certainly a gymnast who will be thinking about competitions such as the uh, World Championships later this year in uh, Kitakyushu. It's 22.9 for Vlada Nikolchenko. It is time to start the third rotation of this first set of gymnasts. The Noy Ashram, the leader of the competition. But there is still another group to come later. But Ashram now competing with the club. She scored 26.9 in qualifying. Okay, remember what I told you. Love yourself. Get up and dance. There is so much in that routine. It's no wonder they react as they do. It is busy, it is big, it is so well performed. There is so much expectation when it comes to Linoy Ashram and she does handle it just marvellously. Twenty-three point seven five, the score for Jalilova. That's an improvement of point six five from qualification. Now to a gymnast who has made a thoroughly impressive start to this competition, Ekaterina Vedenieva. But this was troublesome. In qualifying, 19.7 with a ribbon. She's gained two plus marks so far throughout this final. Can she keep it going? Strong. 
It's certainly a routine that she can score highly for. She was fourth in the ribbon final in the Pesaro World Cup with a score of 23.2. Way up from her performance in qualification here. Oh, that's a good number. 28.45 for Ashram and 9.25 for execution. And she has gained a mark and a half from qualification. That could be a very key score for Ashram. Such an expressive and powerful display with the ribbon from Vodinieva. Now, Paulina Velagina has navigated her two lower scoring routines. She now has the hoop and the ball to come. Was positioned fourth of the uh, gymnasts trying to get that qualification spot at the halfway mark. It's so difficult in a rhythmic gymnastics routine to balance intensity and control. She does that ever so well as a gymnast. There's enough wildness to the performance to be captivated by it, but not so much that you feel she's not in full command of what she's doing as an athlete. Better from Vodinieva, 22.05. It's not as high a score as she can post with the ribbon, but it is up by a mark and a half from qualification. Salome Pashava performing with the ball. 22.9 for this in qualification. It was her second strongest performance. She is going for Olympic qualification. May have more than one route available though.
There will be the loss of a full mark for needing to get the replacement apparatus for Salome Pashava. As mentioned earlier, she could well benefit from a reallocation place from the World Championships and a spot at the Olympic Games. And that is as a result of Vedenieva, who was the original recipient of it, performing so well at the World Cups that she won the qualification place there. It's all rather intricate, but hopefully it's making some sense. So to the gymnast who set the early pace at the halfway mark, Natalia Garcia, the top performer of those going for Olympic qualification after her two strongest routines. She now has clubs and ribbon. The gymnast who trains in uh, San Cugat, north of Barcelona, at the High Performance Centre. Now, what kind of number are we looking at there for Garcia? We'll come back and look at the routine in a moment. 21.075 for Pashava. She's down by almost a couple of marks from qualifying, as expected. It's not just the loss of marks for getting the replacement apparatus but it's the difficulty that's lost as well the parts of the routine that don't happen because of the missed skills Anastasia Salos of Belarus Gymnast who was in second place at the halfway mark. 21.85 with the ribbon in qualifying. This was her discarded score.
The gymnast who endured a move of over 4,000 kilometers from Van Aul in the Russian Federation to Belarus in 2014. Her mother lived with her in her first year there and then moved back. Berezina, 24.1. She's up by close to half a mark from qualification. Garcia, 23.55. She is up by half a mark from qualification. So the trend continues for Garcia. Next up is the ribbon routine for her, which was problematic, very problematic in qualifying. So just a moment of calm for us to reflect on where we are at the moment, which is rotation three of the first set of gymnasts. We will move fairly rapidly on to the next lot of competitors after these have done all four routines. We look now at Andrea Verdes of Romania with the hoop. This was her second best work in qualification, 23.7. It's a good recovery from Andrea Verdes after a difficult time with the ribbon. A gymnast who also has really developed a lot lately. She was ninth at the European Games. And as mentioned earlier, tenth in the all-around competition at the last European Championships. It's her fourth time at continental level hope you're having a good old dance along at home this was a bit of a cult hit wasn't it some years ago Agostea Dinte, song by uh, the group Ozone, I think. Big chance here for Fanny Pignitsky with these next couple of routines to pick up some big numbers. She scored well in qualification with the ball 24.25.
It's a lovely nod to the Olympic movement from Fanny Pignitsky. One moment in time by the late Whitney Houston, the anthem of the 1988 Olympic Games, where the individual round champion was the Soviet Union's Marina Lobach. Adriana Dunavska of Bulgaria took the silver medal and the USSR took the bronze with Alexandra Timoshenko. 24.5 24.525, the score for Salos with the ribbon. Big step up by two and a half marks from qualification. Verdes, 24.6, really well done to her. That is 0.9 gained from qualifying. What it means is that Garcia remains ahead of Verdes. So in this... <laughs> Mini, mini competition, if you will. Six of the nine gymnasts in this first set. It is Garcia who is leading the way. Ksenia Mustafaeva with the clubs. So lovely to see Ksenia Mustafaeva back in an all-around competition at the European Championship. She was eighth in 2014, competed at two World Games as well, making several finals across the Kali and Wrocław editions. Didn't take part in any of the World Cup events. She didn't only do the Olympics, she also did two World Games, Wrocław not this season anyway she's competed at many world cups over the years i'm going to give you an update in a moment on the olympic qualification race because things have changed there Margarita Kolosov of Germany, who's made a really good start to this all-around final. This is the routine she needs a big step up with. It was 17.775 in qualifying.
Most unfortunate that she had that little loss of control of the apparatus because it's uh, another promising display from the teenager from Potsdam. She competed in an online event back in March, finishing third in the competition behind the Avarinas. Now, here is the key number. Fanny Pignitsky, 25. What that means is she has surpassed Natalia Garcia by three tenths of a mark. Muster Fiverr, 23.7, is the third best performer so far of the gymnasts going for Olympic qualification, but it is now Pignitsky ahead of Garcia by three tenths. Vlada Nikolchenko of Ukraine with the hoop 23.6 in qualification. to one of the most iconic pieces of classical music out there, Vlada Nikolchenko. O Fortuna, the original medieval poem that inspired uh, Orff's Fortuna Imperatrix Mundi as part of uh, Carmina Burana. 19.6 for Kolosov. She is up by almost two marks from qualification. This is the final performance of the third rotation, Azul Jalilova of Azerbaijan. She's got room to add some points here. 19.45 for this in qualification can be a much better routine. She was the junior world championship silver medalist in Moscow with the ball in 2019. <laughs>
You know how the old saying goes, you wait all day for an operatic reinvention of a satirical Latin medieval poem and then two come along at the same time. It's lovely from uh, Jalilova though. She really is a, a fine competitor with this apparatus. for Nicole Chenka. That's a good increase of over a mark from qualification. Decent aggregate gain for Nicole Chenka across the competition. It's going to be difficult to push up into genuine medal contention. Well controlled catch with back bend from uh, the Azerbaijani gymnast. Super trap there, lovely toe point as she catches the apparatus to all the little details well preserved. Well, we are going to know, after this score has come in, the state of play with just one more rotation. Let's go round again. The final performance from Linoya Ashram. She leads the way. A score of 84.2 thus far. 24.05 for this in qualification. Hava Nagila, let us rejoice indeed. They will rejoice after that display from Israel's Linoy Ashram. She can now stop and she can take a breath. What will be, will be in the later session. It's out of her hands now, but she has delivered. For her, there is more, much more to come. But it will not be today. The biggest show of all is on the horizon.
And now to the gymnast who won the Olympic qualification berth at the FIG World Cup Series with high-quality performances, Katerina Vodinieva. She's also delivered high-quality performances today in this final. It's easy to just keep making the same point again and again and again, but you have to make it with Vodenieva. She is a gymnast who is delivering super work at the moment. 23.95 for Jalilova with the ball. That's a great improvement of three and a half marks from qualification. Four and a half marks, excuse my mathematics. Now, Ashram down from her qualification performance with the ribbon 22.6. She's lost about a mark and a half. Paulina Beregina of Spain. Her final performance with the ball 23.5 in qualification. That's a most elegantly performed routine to conclude. And suddenly, the emotion that has been so pent up, it overflows. And my word, there is our reminder of just what it means to all of these athletes and what they have put in to this quest. Oh, she's given it everything.
there may well be a fair few more tears today. And I'm just talking about you sitting at home watching it. For Denny Ava, 24.65, another improvement for her. On we go, Salome Pashava. As ever, Salome Pashava gives a performance of expressivity and polish to conclude her campaign. Twenty three point eight for Berezina. And that's an improvement from qualification. It has her leading the way at the moment in terms of the six gymnasts in this particular group who are going for Olympic qualification, but she may well find herself surpassed. Now, this is a massive routine for Natalia Garcia. She was leading the way until the last rotation when Fanny Pignitsky overtook her by three-tenths. This was problematic in qualification for Garcia, 14.35. Take a deep breath, everyone watching at home. We are with all of these gymnasts in spirit. It is such a poignant and moving finish. If it is not to be, then she is no less a gymnast for it. Her contribution, no less magnificent. Natalia Garcia, the 26-year-old, has given so much to this sport. She's been a national champion on several occasions. And she had some difficulties with the apparatus, lost control of it at one point. It's 
So inquiries coming in thick and fast. Lenoy Ashram and Paulina Beregina. Ashram, no surprise there's an inquiry there because she was a fair bit down from qualification. So the superior jury will look at that. 25.15 for Pashava. Big, big jump up from qualification. So significant. Four marks almost, three and a half marks. Now, Anastasia Salos of Belarus, her final performance. 27.7 in qualification for this lovely routine. If any one single routine embodies the development in the uh, Belarusians' uh, gymnastics, it's that one. It really is just a lovely routine. One shouldn't love a routine solely because of the uh, choice of music, but it, it is a wonderful song as well. She performs it fantastically. Oh, For Garcia, it's 19. Point six five. And that means she now goes below Berezina, and that means for Garcia Olympic qualification, regrettably, is out of reach. So the magic number for everyone now is going beyond the ninety three point six five for Polina Berezina. This is Verdes with the ball. An emotional conclusion to the campaign of Andrea Verdes of Romania. It's all just 
hitting home now, isn't it, for so many of these gymnasts? Such an emotional day of sport. 26.9 for Salos. So she is currently second in the all around standings. Two and a half marks behind Linoy Ashram. We still have the Avarinas to come in our later session, along with Alina Harnasko. Fanny Pignitsky of Hungary leading the way in terms of the Olympic qualification. She must be absolutely exhausted. The effort that has gone into trying to secure this Olympic qualification berth, and yet she still finds a way to smile. Fanny Pignitsky. Superb work from her. Verdez, 24.5. And that means that Verdez goes ahead of Berezina. So... Andrea Verdes is now leading the qualification race in this particular group. We still have three more to come in the next half of the competition. But the two Spanish gymnasts, Paulina Berezina and Natalia Garcia, are with immense regret. It's a horrible thing to have to say as a broadcaster, but they are also now out of the running. What about Ksenia Mustafaeva? This her final performance. 20.85 in qualification. Senya Mustafaeva has turned up to this competition and given us some gymnastics that reminds us of her greatest work. 
in days gone by how wonderful it has been to watch her compete. Pignitsky goes into the lead when it comes to Olympic qualification. She surpasses Verdez. So Pignitsky is the trendsetter and by a good margin as well. 97.25 for the Hungarian. So we are getting some clarity now on that Tokyo place as much as we can have for the time being. It's our last chance to see Margarita Kolosov of Germany senior international debutant at this competition and looking a comfortable part of the final. They will doubtless be very happy with this display, the German delegation. As mentioned earlier, the reigning national champion. The survivor scores 19.375. And so uh, that means that the Olympian from Rio 2016 will not be able to catch... Fanny Pignitsky. Pignitsky has done wonderfully. She's in third place overall in the all-around. It's a great performance, surpassing for Denieva. Still have many competitors to come as we look back at this work from Margarita Kolosov. Gymnast who's competed at the uh, junior world championship level and junior yeah. European championship yeah. level. The final performance for the Ukrainian gymnast Vlada Nikolchenko. 23.3 with the ball in qualification.
She did ever so well during that performance to stop the ball from leaving the space. Vlada Nikolchenko. European Championship medalist from 2019. Margarita Kolosov scores 20.9 with the hoop. She's currently in 10th position in the all-around final. And so we arrive at the final performance of the first half of the competition. We're going to have a very short break in a moment before the next group of gymnasts take to the competition floor. Arzu Jalilova of Azerbaijan with the clubs. This was by some way her best working qualification, 24.25. There is a great deal to be very encouraged by when it comes to the uh, gymnastics of Arzu Jalilova, who trains at the Orchak Sports Club in Baku, part of the Baku Olympic Sports Complex. 24, the score for Nicole Chenka with the ball. She's improved upon her qualification mark by almost three quarters and is in fifth position behind Ashram. Salos Pignitsky and Vidinieva. Two gymnasts have broken the 100 barrier. Ashram and Salos. And the key thing is that it's Fanny Pignitsky who leads the Olympic qualification mini tournament of nine gymnasts so far, with three to come in our next session. Well, we just have this score to come in for Jalilova. As you may have heard, our Master of Ceremonies, Niels Daniel, telling the crowd they've got 15 minutes to stretch their legs. And you'll have the chance to pop the kettle on in a moment and then have yourself a cup of tea or <laughs> something stronger to steady your nerves as we continue the drama in Varna. As soon as that number is in for Jalilova, then we will know the state of play at the halfway mark of the competition. Now, we can't give, at the moment, confirmed rankings because inquiries are being considered. So anything that uh, comes in now will be provisional.
24.1. The score for Jalilova. Very comparable to qualification, down by a tenth and a half. So just as soon as we can bring you intermediary results, we'll do that. But otherwise, I shall see you in about 10 minutes or so for the resumption of competition.
Right, let's just do some housekeeping for the inquiries. 23.7 for Nikolchenko with clubs. That inquiry has been rejected. I think we've just heard there that uh, Lenoy Ashram has yep, had no success with her inquiry. That could be quite key. Paulina Bedagina's score, 24.3. So that's an increase for her of 0.5 from qualification, but no change to her ribbon score. doesn't change the qualification standings for the Olympic Games though Fanny Pignitsky is still way out in front So this is what we know. It's Ashram, Salos, Pignitsky, one, two, and three. Ashram, the key score in terms of what is still to come because she is the uh, pace set of this first group with some very strong qualifiers still to come in set B. And uh, Fanny Pignitsky, the key thing for her is that she has beaten the six going for Olympic qualification in her set. There are three more still to go in the second, but, and here is the important caveat, she's beaten all of the top six in qualification when it comes to the, the Olympic tournament, the Olympic race. So Fanny Pignitsky, in positioning herself where she has done, has seen off everyone that was one through to six in the qualification group of those nine gymnasts going for a Tokyo berth. She still has to wait and see what Victoria Bogdanova does. She'll be getting us underway. Eleni Kiladiti is also going for Olympic qualification, as is Rachel Stoyanov. We also have, of course, the small matter of the Avarinas in this group, and we have Alina Harnasko, the all-around silver medalist, at the European Championships in Kiev. So the long and the short of it is we have masses of gymnastics to come. We don't know anything at all yet. We're none the wiser. We're all in the dark. And it's a great pleasure to have your company as the picture now fully unfolds with the second half of this all-around final. Holly Hogben here. 
as ever, bringing you all of the action from the Palace of Culture and Sports in the beautiful setting of the Black Sea Coast and Varna. So let us get underway once more. Victoria Bogdanova of Estonia will begin this second half of the all-around final. Twenty-first strongest in qualification and going for Olympic qualifying. The 26-year-old from Tallinn is one of the top performers nationally. Won a couple of apparatus gold medals at the national championships last year. Twin sister Olga, also uh, an experienced international rhythmic gymnast. A gymnast who is a graduate of physical education from Tallinn University. She's competed at seven world championships. Now what's important is to get a sense of average scores, which I'll talk about in just a moment after this performance from Zora Agamirova. 12th strongest in qualification, the 19-year-old from Baku in Azerbaijan. All-around silver medalist at the World University Games. For many years now, Akhamidova has lived at the Academy of Physical Education and Sports in the uh, area of the National Gymnastics Arena 
in the capital city of Azerbaijan on the shores of the Caspian Sea. Bogdanova, 23.3. Now, the key number here is the average score for Fanny Pignitsky was 24.3125. So, essentially, if you're averaging 24.32, then you are going to surpass the Hungarian in the Olympic qualification race. It's a little crude to talk solely about averages because... Some routines tend to score higher than others in the sport of rhythmic gymnastics, but it does give us a useful guide to think about that uh, average of 24.32. 26.7 is Linoy Ashram's average, so in excess of that will surpass her leading position. Just gives an idea. Well, here is a 16-year-old, she turned 17 in a matter of days, who has really caught the attention of the rhythmic gymnastics world lately, Sofia Raffaelli of Italy. She's been so impressive in the World Cup series. She won a World Cup silver medal and several others with this performance. Something so key about the background of the young Italian, Sofia Raffaelli, is that her mother is a ballet dancer. Both of her parents absolutely adore classical music. She grew up listening to it. Her routines have a classical quality to them. 24.15 for Agamirova with the ball down uh, by 0.6 from qualification. So if you're just joining the action or rejoining the action, let's take stock of what we have coming up here. This is the second session, the second group of the individual all-around final. Leading the way, Lenoy Ashram after the first group and in terms of Olympic qualification, Fanny Pignitsky of Hungary. Now to the first host representation of these world championships, the 23-year-old Katrin Tasseva of Bulgaria. Seventh strongest in the qualification process. She scored 22 with the ribbon.
She is a much respected, even revered gymnast in these parts. Katrin Tassiva, silver medalist at the European Championships of 2017 with the apparatus that you've just seen. Bulgaria have already secured two places at the Olympic Games. Rafaela's score with the club's 26.4. She's down by about half a mark from qualification. She's working 0.3 below the lead average, which is Linoy Ashram. I'll try to keep you uh, abreast of all the numeracy as this competition goes on. Tassiva has won over 20 medals on the World Cup circuit, including a gold medal in Sofia in 2018. She's reading a degree in sports studies at the National Sports Academy. To another competitor who is aiming for Olympic qualification. Eleni Kiladiti of Greece, one of the three competitors that we have yet to see all the routines of, along with Victoria Bogdanova and Rachel Stoyanov. Kiladiti scored 21.35 with the hoop in qualification. The 21-year-old from Shalagos in the suburbs of Athens, reading a degree in physical education at the University of Athens and the all-around silver medalist at the 2018 Mediterranean Games. It's 22.45 for Tassiva. With the ribbon, she gains almost half a mark from her qualification performance. That will do as a start. Just to remind you, or maybe tell you for the first time, depending on how long you've been watching, that the uh, qualification positions not so relevant because the gymnast could discard a routine in qualification. So where Keladiti in qualifying would have been able to hope to discard that drop of the apparatus, not the case. In the final, everything counts. Zola Agamidova has submitted an inquiry for the difficulty score of her ball routine. Chance to look at a contender, a real contender. Alina Harnasko of Belarus, all around silver medalist at the European Championships last year. Fourth strongest in qualification here. Big routine, this.
It's such an explosive performance from Anasco. Won her third senior European Championship medal at those Euros at the end of last year as Kiladiti gets a 21.3 to start things, which is going to make things quite tricky if she is to surpass Fanny Pignitsky. 24.32, the average number needed to go beyond the Hungarian. Gymnast who started life here. Harnasco is a, a group competitor. Really uh, most comfortable as a, a senior now. Representing Ukraine, Victoria Onoprienka. Ninth strongest in qualification. This was her best routine, 25.4. She really does like working with the clubs. Onoprienko was a competitor at all four of the World Cup events. The most recent of which was Pesaro not so long ago. For Hanasko, it's 25.5 with the ball, which is down quite away from qualification, 1.35 marks, and that does put the Belarusian quite a way off the pace, actually. And there the moment where the apparatus was lost. It wasn't the easiest qualification campaign for Nicole Seligman of Israel. But she made it in as the 11th strongest in qualification. The 20-year-old starts with the ribbon. 21.9 her score in qualifying.
Israel, one of the nations that has secured two qualification spots for the Olympic Games. Those are what are called non-nominative spots, so they can go to any gymnasts. Different from the Olympic qualification places earned here, or the place earned here. 24.8 for Onoprienka. So she is down by 0.6 from qualification as we look back at Nicole Zelikman. Technically very sound competitor, but she did have issues in this routine. She's had a, a couple of problems in the World Cups recently, uncharacteristically for her. It is the first chance for us to see the top performer in qualification, the 13-time world champion and six times a European champion, Dina Averina. She has, however, not yet won the European all-around title. 28.4 for this in qualifying. The rapid fire use of the apparatus is extraordinary in that routine. The hoop just does so much. And there is no doubting the mastery of the apparatus that she has. Multiple all champion, Dina 21.6 for Zelikman. Down by three tenths from qualification. Nine medals overall for Dina Averina at the European Championships. Lovely use of the hoops momentum to roll it back. The rebound into the catch was done with minimal adjustment. They're used to celebrating her performances. She has finished in bronze medal position in a few World Cup events this year, which is not something she's remotely accustomed to. This is the final competitor of the nine that is going for Olympic qualification. The young competitor from North Macedonia, the 18-year-old Rachel Stoyanov. 22.9 in qualifying for this routine. Твоя стар друга, забравила 
Сиди. На друг ти подарю си любимия сигнал от моята малка песничка, която бях ти пял. На този миг за ъгъл сигнала наш дочу. What a special moment this is for Rachel Stoyanov. She has Bulgarian citizenship as well as her North Macedonian citizenship. She was actually born in Los Angeles. She was born in the United States. Her maternal grandmother has Macedonian roots. The score for Dina Avarina is 28. She is down by 0.4 from qualification. She is functioning well above the 26.7 average set by Lenoy Ashram, which is key. And this a look back at the work of the teenager Rachel Stoyanov, who was 16th in the all-around at the last European Championships. Really well controlled in the spin on the index finger. <laughs> Twenty minutes older than Dina, coming about ten minutes later in the competition is Arena Avarina of the Russian Federation. Seven times a European champion, the all-around winner in 2018. Also has a mighty collection of World Championship titles to her name, Arena Avarina. The Avarinas from Zavolzhi in the northwest of the Russian Federation. Rachel Stoyanov, who's nursing a cut to the right knee, she gets 20.95. For her routine with the ball, down by a couple of marks from her qualification campaign. And this, a look back at the club's routine of Arena Avarina. 25.4 in qualification for this display. Can she make up a little ground? Get ready for some noise here in the Palace of Culture and Sports. It's Boriana Kalein. Bulgaria's own. 
Gymnast from Sofia scored 21.2 with the ribbon in qualification. She was a sixth best overall qualifier. She's been excellent in the World Cup events this year. Rock on, Varna, rock on. <laughs> Such a great routine. The, the way it just bursts into that uh, musical energy in the second half is wonderful. She was absolutely brilliant in the Sofia World Cup, winning three gold medals. She's the reigning national champion. And all of the gymnasts know this city very well, the Bulgarians, because they train here. Very nice line on her attitude pirouettes. Her standing leg in releve was excellent. The back bend pirouette, very difficult skill. not just a characterful performer she is also a very technically impressive young gymnast her turns are quite terrific so this will take us to the one quarter mark of this rotation will go back round again with Victoria Bogdanova in just a moment. Second perform performance even from a Victoria Bag Bogdanova. Gymnast who is aiming for Olympic qualification. 23.2 with the ball in qualifying.
Isn't there a lovely variety of orchestration in this competition? Really something for everyone. The finest international result of her career was the bronze medal in the ball at the World University Games in 2019. Don't think that scores right. We'll <laughs> just try and bring you a proper number in a moment. For Arena Avarina. Watch this space. And we'll also bring you the uh, confirmed score for Boriana Kalein as well. Huge motorbike fan, Victoria Bogdanova. Huge fan of that score, Boriana Kalein. 24.5. She is up by 3.2 marks from the qualification campaign. We just consider that Lenoy Ashram scored a 22.6 with the ribbon. The ribbon score is traditionally the lower score. That's a very competitive number posted by Calais. Azerbaijan's Zora Agamirova is the next competitor to take to the competition floor. This, her strongest routine in qualifying, 25 with the clubs. This was some lovely work. She was a silver medalist at the World University Games with this apparatus. Really didn't have the easiest time of things at the last Super European Championships. Agamidova was ninth in Kiev in the all-around. So the score is in for Arena Avarina. It is 28.4. It is an absolutely huge increase from qualification of three marks. Our second opportunity to enjoy the work of Sofia Raffaelli of Italy. Ribbon silver medalist at the Tashkent World Cup. Bronze medalist in Sofia in Bulgaria with the ribbon. But struggled in qualification 16.85. As much that she can change here.
There is some extraordinarily intricate pattern work with the ribbon in that routine. One of the things it's worth us uh, reflecting on is just how the ribbon has the capacity to travel so much in the air. 22.5 for Agamilova. So she is uh, down by three marks from qualification. Focused and ready to go. It's Katrin Tassiva. Twenty five point three five with the hoop in qualification. The gymnast who was part of the Bulgarian team that won medals in 2017 and 2017 has a, a very unfortunate conclusion to the routine. Oh, the noise there from the crowd told you everything, the anguish in their voices. 23. The score for Raffaele with the ribbon, that's a massive improvement for her. Up by over six marks from qualification. That was the score she discarded in qualifying, which, as I said before, the luxury does not exist. In the final, everything counts. There's nothing you can do in a position like that. The wry smile from Tassiva. Couldn't quite believe it had slipped away. Greece's Eleni Keladiti had a 21.3 with the hoop to begin. Now, this was her strongest work in qualifying, 23.55.
She has a very nice musicality as a performer. Gymnast whose parents chose rhythmic gymnastics for her as an extracurricular activity. She's gone on to represent her country in so many competitions as Bogdanova scores 22.1 with the ball. She has lost 1.1 from qualification. All of this very encouraging for Fanny Pignitsky. 24.8 the score for Tassiva with the hoop. That uh, one mark lost for not having contact with the apparatus at the end of the exercise, really costly. She would have been right up there. It's the second performance of Alina Harnasco, who lost about 1.3 from her qualification performance with the ball. She now takes the floor with what was her finest routine in qualifying, 27.1 with clubs. As ever, it is such memorable, charismatic gymnastics from Alina Harnasco. Now, what's the control there? Interesting seeing her reaction to that. Doubtless pleased with that. 24.925 at Keladiti. She has increased by 1.4 there or thereabouts from qualification just to remind ourselves the magic number 24.32 average to surpass Pignitsky when it comes to Olympic qualification Nineteen-year-old from Minsk, nervously watching on. For the second time, we have the chance to see Victoria Onoprienko of Ukraine. This was the routine that gave her some issues in qualification. Nineteen point three. The ninth strongest qualifier was able to discard it. Obviously, she cannot hear.
had some difficulties that needed recovering from. Victoria Onoprienka, she finished sixth in the uh, ribbon final at the Tashkent World Cup earlier this year. Part of the Ukrainian team that won Junior European Championship silver in 2018. It's another of those what might have been moments. Now this is going to be an interesting routine to see from Nicole Zelikman. She scored 20 with the hoop in qualification, had some real issues with it. It certainly looked a little more secure. She was a European Championship bronze medalist with the hoop in 2019 in Azerbaijan. We will have apparatus finals tomorrow. It was a lovely moment for Zelikman when she won that bronze medal. Her parents were born in Baku. Lives now in the Sharon region. So difficult to maintain the spot turn technique with the hoop working around the neck like that. Remarkable skill. Dina Averina scored 27.8 for this routine in qualification. She's already started strongly.
the European Games all-around champion from 2019. Is she going to add a European Championship all-around honours to her collection? There's very little missing from her collection. This could be the year to complete it. For Harnasco, it's 26.5, down by 0.6 from qualification. Didn't look quite as controlled as it was in the uh, qualifying campaign. 21.4 for Onoprienka with the ribbon. That takes her up by 2.1 from qualification. Zelikman, that's a massive increase of 5.15 from qualifying. Well done to Nicole Zellickman there. That's the big gain of these uh, last few performances. So just for clarification, Lenoy Ashram, the leader at the halfway mark of the competition with an average score of 26.7. Dina Averina and uh, Arena Averina have already shown they are working above that level. Will they maintain it? Competing with the clubs, Rachel Stoyanov, one of the three gymnasts trying to go beyond Fanny Pignitsky's total. Gymnast who really has developed her work over the past year or so is Rachel Stoyanov. Trained at the Levski Sofia Club here in Bulgaria. Oh, what a number that is. 29.15 for Dina Averina and 19.9 for difficulty. And that has really put her comprehensively in the driving seat. Good form in her leaps. You know it's remarkable. She didn't expect to even qualify for the final. They were all set to uh, go back home, the um, Stoyanov family. Arena Avarina with the ribbon. She started with 28.4 with the clubs.
so rarely in international competition has she finished ahead of Dina but she did it at the European Championships in 2018 just missed out at the World Championships in 2019 what can she do at these European Championships 22.05 the score for Stoyanov so she is down by 1.8 from her qualification score. Things are looking very good at the moment for Fanny Pignitsky. Very good. Very hard to maintain the control. Difficult skill work. We're close to the halfway mark of this second set of gymnasts. For the second time, we see Boriana Kalin. She started well, 24.5 with the ribbon. That was the score she got for the hoop routine in qualification. That is huge gymnastics from a body and a Kalin. Oh, the pirouetting work in that routine is stunning. <laughs> oh, yes, the flags are flying. Can she make a challenge for the podium? Very good score of 25.3 for Arena Avarina with the ribbon. She gains 1.3 from qualification. Lovely rebound, regrasp. And here we go, the pirouetting. Well, we didn't get to enjoy it, but uh, I guess there's no time really. If you try to show um, all of her pirouettes in slow motion, it'll take the rest of the day. Hey, she works at is something to behold. It is uh, reciprocated by the crowd. So once the score is in for Boriana Kalain, we will know the state of play at the halfway mark of the second half, if you will. The half of the half. Well, just a moment to 
gather our thoughts. It's quite useful, isn't it, really, considering how uh, relentless the entertainment has been. Hope you enjoyed that little break, because it's done. On we go. Victoria Bogdanova takes to the floor for the third time. Her club's routine scored 22.15 in qualification. Throughout the gymnastics world, we are seeing more and more competitors challenge stereotypes about the sort of age that you need to be to be an elite level gymnast and how long careers last. Yeah, Victoria well, Bogdanova is one of those gymnasts achieving her best international results in her mid-20s. from Estonia. Yeah. Competed in Sofia, Baku and Tashkent at the World Cups, didn't go to Pesaro. Fourth in the ribbon final at the Baku World Cup was Zora Agamirova. She could do with a high quality display here with that apparatus. 21.1 was her scoring qualifying. Third performance from Zora Agamidova of Azerbaijan. Said the highlight of her career was the team gold medal she won at the Islamic Solidarity Games in 2017. It was in Baku. Such a young gymnast when that happened. Well, she's still such a young gymnast now. Oh, okay. 27.775.
Huge score from Boriana Calais. 21.65 from Bogdanova with the club. She's down by about half a mark from qualifying. Calais is up by over three marks. Sofia Raffaelli scored 23.85 in qualifying. You know, we are really starting to get used to seeing Sofia Raffaelli. Have to remember that this is her first full senior year. Three medals at the Junior World Championships. 22.55 for Agamidova. She does improved by 1.35 from qualification 1.45 even yes back to Sofia Raffaelli it was in Bulgaria where she made her senior and international debut at the Sofia World Cup Katrin Tassiva performing what was her strongest routine in qualification, 26.05. Yeah. Silver medalist with the ball at the European Games. She was Bulgaria's Sportswoman of the Year in 2019. 
She is at gymnastics royalty in Varna. She really did have an extremely difficult time of things over the last year. She lost her former partner, Nikolai, due to COVID in July. Posted a very uh, beautiful tribute to him on social media. As the score is in for Raffaele, a little drop down from qualification. 22.95, she loses 0.9. Didn't compete at the Olympic Games in 2016. Has got her eye on one of those two berths in the Bulgaria team. Greece's Eleni Kiladiti scored 22.2 with the clubs in qualification. Right at the end of the routine, she has to regrasp. At least she managed to get her hands back on the apparatus. It's been a tough day for the Greek delegation for Eleni Kiladiti. It looks as things currently stand that it's not going to be easy for her to catch Fanny Pignitsky. 25.9 for Tassiva with the ball. Down by a tenth and a half from qualification, that's all. It's very nice leaps and a secure penche turns. Just got there. Full mark lost if you don't have the apparatus at the end of the exercise. As I mentioned earlier, starts around about half a mark for retrieval. Third performance from Alina Hanasco, the silver medalist in the all-around competition at the European Championships in Kiev last year. She's performed well with the ribbon in the World Cup Series. Has a very intricate and interesting start 
to her routine. She got a silver medal in Baku and a bronze in Pesaro, the most recent competition. The competition continues here in Varna. Melina Harnasco, who has excelled with the ribbon in recent World Cup events, but it is proving to be a very compact and tough day just to get towards the podium. There are so many terrific competitors. Kiladiti, 23.95 for her. Now, what that means is that she would need a score with the ribbon of in excess of 27 in order to catch Fanny Pignitsky, which would be uh, improbable to say the least. Third performance from Ukraine's Victoria Onoprienka. This was her second best routine in qualification, 24.3. Victoria Onoprienka with a very stylish routine, actually. It really is most engaging gymnastics. She always says that her philosophy is work without losing heart. Now for Harnasco, it's 23.7 with the ribbon. That's a very good jump up. From her performance in qualification, she gains almost two marks to come for her the hoop. Onop 
Priyanka had such a tough time at the European Championships in 2020, in and then out of the team. Just good to see her get her moment in the all-around final. Third routine for Nicole Zeligman of Israel. This was her finest by some way in qualification. 26.1 with the ball. It's a memorable routine, this. The work rate of Nicole Zelikman, something that can never be underestimated. Her mother, a rhythmic gymnastics coach. Twenty-five point one five for Onoprienka. That's a way better performance from her. She's gained almost a mark from her qualification score with the hoop. Lots of power in her fuete turns. Well controlled trap with the legs. Well, it has been very impressive so far from Dina Avarina. 28 with the hoop, 29.15 with the ball. What now with the clubs? 28.7 in qualification. Reigning world champion. This is an absolutely fascinating European Championships. Such a busy time for all of these gymnasts. The 
condensed calendar has given them so many competitions leading right into the games of the Summer Olympiad. Zelikman scores 25.775. She loses a few tenths from qualification, but not much more. Did manage to re-grasp. What cost? This will be the first opportunity for us to do a comparison score between Dina and Arena out of Arena because so far Arena's done clubs and ribbon, Dina hoop and ball with the scores in. So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, Dina out of Arena club score is in terms of a comparison. More on that in a moment. Rachel Stoyanov for the third time. She competes with the ribbon. 16th in the all-around at the last European Championships. The wonderful, striking, powerful orchestration of a modest Mazorgsky. Work from the 1860s. Now Rachel Stoinov, or more on her in just a moment as uh, we get the scoring of 27.5 for Dina Avarina. She loses 1.2 from qualification and that is 0.9 down from arena's score with the clubs okay calculated at the ready folks stoyanov might well be priced out of the market when it comes to olympic qualification but she didn't even expect to be in this final she's done so well it's a, a terrific result for Stoyanov, whatever happens. Now, has the door just opened a touch for Arena Avarina? She didn't perform a hoop routine in qualification due to the uh, competition of the team event. So let us see what she will deliver.
Well, well, well. We have ourselves a most interesting contest if we where you look at these European Championships. The battle for Olympic places, the battle for the podium, the battle for gold. It's 20.3 for Rachel Stoyanov. An improvement of almost a mark, actually over a mark from qualification, excuse me. What about her? Where does Boriana Kalain feature? Her current average score, 26.13, which is a little bit lower than Linoy Ashram's. But they are starting to believe Boriana Kalain. 26.6 with this routine in qualification. If she can find a little extra, then she's in play. Oh, her dance work is just exquisite. A proper performer, a proper artist. How was the execution? How do you manage to stabilize the emotion at a time like this, knowing the home crowd is rooting for you? Sometimes when it becomes a possibility, it's even trickier. 26.2 for Arena Avarina. Little oscillation perhaps. Releve so well established in the Fuete turns. They were very powerful. Stylish trap at the end of the routine. This is a great conclusion to things. Such a performer. Kalain was fourth in the all around at the last European Championships. Can she get one place beyond that? It would be a remarkable, remarkable result. Now, we arrive at that point where we go back round again. But it's for the last time. So now, the final position that you see is going to be 
where those gymnasts end up. The number next to their name is as high as they can finish. They can only go below that. From the Olympic qualification standpoint, 97.25 is the Tokyo mark. That's Fanny Pignitsky of Hungary, the leader of the group of nine. Victoria Bogdanova would need something improbable if she were to displace Pignitsky in excess of 30 with the ribbon. The reigning Estonian champion with the ribbon takes to the floor Victoria Bogdanova, the 26-year-old from Tallinn. Victoria Bogdanova completes her all-around competition and says an enormous thank you to the fans. And you know what, Victoria Bogdanova, well, she has proven that you can achieve some of your very finest performances internationally at any age. Now for Kalein, 27 Point four with the ball. Heading very much in the right direction from a scoreboard point of view is Boriana Kalain. The final performance of the all-around competition from Azerbaijan, Zora Agamirova, 22.95 in qualification.
Still so much more to come, one suspects, from Zora Agamirova, the 19-year-old. She was 18th in the all-around competition in 2018 at the European Championships, fourth in the unofficial all-around in 2019. As Bogdanova scores 21.3, she is currently in 12th position. And that's the highest position that she can finish in, although one would naturally expect her to drop down quite significantly, though she was the 21st strongest in qualification, so could end up being a very positive result for her. It is the final performance of Sofia Raffaelli. She turns 17 in a week's time and scored 25.4 with the ball in qualification. Such promise in this young athlete, such excitement that the Italian fans feel about her with just cause. She won every junior title in Italy for about four years before she turned senior, dominated. Agaminova scores 23.55. That's a really good finish to her campaign. She's currently in eighth place. Coached by uh, Giulietta Cantalupi, Olympian. She trains in Fabriano alongside Alexandra Giorgio Calesi and Milena Baldassari. It's always rather nice when one finishes with Catherine Tassiva's club's routine in her home country. Many of you will know the great story of Catherine Tassiva and her club's title in Sofia. But let's enjoy this routine first.
Such a warm reception for Katrin Tassiva as she completes her competition. The gymnast who sold the clubs that won her the World Cup gold medal in Sofia in 2018. Sold both the clubs and the medal to raise funds for even Todorov, the footballer, to have cancer surgery. And she was a recipient of clubs bronze in Sofia this year as well. It's one of her finest pieces. The cadets from the National Naval Academy standing guard as we get very close to our parade of medalists. Well, here's a gymnast who's just given it everything today. The 21-year-old from Greece, Eleni Keladiti. It's her fourth European Championship. She is going for Olympic qualification. It may well be because she needs over 27 with this final routine that it is a step too far. But nonetheless, it's been a fine, fine effort from the experienced gymnast. Eleni Kelaiditi of Greece brings to a close her competition and a competition that has seen her give a very good chase. Into the bronze medal position with 25.7 with the club's Katrin Tassiva. That's our first change to the medals. Still a long way to go though, but it's now Ashram Salos and Tassiva, one, two, and three. Stika e predstavite o prezionu Belorus. Vaša sjunja budi smeti za Alina Garnasko. From Belorus, please welcome Alina Garnasko. It is the final performance of Alina Hanasko of Belarus. She scored 24.7 with a hoop in qualification. Can the all-around silver medalist from last year launch a late challenge?
such a conclusion to her European Championship all-around final. Alina Hanasko of Belarus. Every display that you get from the 19-year-old is enormous. Nothing half-hearted, not for a moment. 22.05. Keladiti is in 12th position. Still, Fanny Pignitsky is leading the Olympic qualification race. Pignitsky, though, has dropped down to 5th position overall. Sofia Raffaelli with 26.4 with the ball up by a mark and she goes into fourth position. The more these scores come in, the more it's evident that Fanny Pignitsky has had one of the competitions of her life, if not the competition of her life. Victoria Onoprienko of Ukraine performs her final routine. She scored 24.2 with the ball in qualification. That's high impact work from the 17 year old from Kiev. Really got her final back on track with a strong performance with a hoop in the last rotation. Five more. 27.1. The score for Harnasco. She now goes into the bronze medal position. Tassiva drops down to fourth place. Let's go to Israel. Here is Nicole Zinnigman. Nicole Zinnigman of Israel. With her final performance, the clubs was her second best in qualification. 25.2 was the score. You got me loose and all of my innocence. Let every love in my heart is so vacant. A holy ghost. Oh, baby, you bring out the devil inside me. Bring out the devil.
Well, for Nicole Zelligman, her focus will soon shift to the next competition, and it's going to be a very big one. Some very good signs in this final from Zelligman, especially her improved performance with the hoop. How is the club score to finish things? It is at this point of the competition that we are, one suspects, likely to see a change to the leaderboard. And it will be potentially right at the top of it. Dina Averina needs in excess of 22.15 to go into the gold medal position. Will it have done the job? The score required well within her grasp when she performs her finest work with this apparatus. There were some clear deductions for execution but there was also a great deal that was right about it and a great deal that was difficult about it Nicole Zelligman 25.85 improving by over half a mark from qualification she's currently in sixth place Final performance for Rachel Stoyanov of North Macedonia. 22.45 in qualifying.
Well, it certainly would have felt like Christmas came early for Rachel Stoyanov because she had no expectation of making the all-around final at all. So much so that the family were all due to leave yesterday and had to extend their stay. She really has impressed so much. Gymnast who has a dual citizenship with Bulgaria and North Macedonia. 25.55 for Onoprienka into eighth place, but she really has picked things up massively in the second half of the competition, gaining about a couple of marks. That's really impressive. Now we're yet to get the score in for Dina Avarina with the ribbon. It might be about to any moment now. 22.675. She just about goes into the gold medal position. Marginally ahead of Linoy Ashram. The gap just over half a mark. So we have ourselves a new leader. Now, what does this mean for Arena Avarina? Her final performance, and it was brilliant in qualifying. Now, in qualification, her score was 29.175. The number that she requires is not as high as that. The number that she requires is 27.425. But what of the deductions? Oh, what a response at the end. Stoyanov, 24.45. 21st place for her. Super finish to her campaign. Up by two marks from qualification. And that means that uh, Fanny Pignitsky of Hungary has secured the Olympic qualification place. We'll talk more about that in a moment because we've got even more drama coming up here. Boriana Kalein. 25.85 in qualification.
story makes sense to me. Such effervescent, creative, elegant, impassioned gymnastics from Bodiana Kalein to bring to a close this all-around final. Has she managed to get onto the podium? Will it be another finish just outside the top three? Whatever happens, she is the great entertainer. Oh, what a final, what a final. Now we're going to bring you an update to the leaderboard because it is Arena Avarina who's gone into the gold medal position just as she did in 2018 at the European Championships. But what about this final score for Bodiana Kalin? She needs in excess of 27.125 to get onto the podium. That's over a mark higher than qualification but it is within her grasp when she's at her very finest. So as things stand, Arena, Dina, Lenoy, one, two, and three. 106.8 for bronze, 107.325 for silver, 109.1 for gold. It is very tight between second and third just a half mark gap then almost 1.8 of daylight between arena avarina and dina avarina all eyes in varna glued to the scoreboard how are your nerves holding up at home everyone what a remarkable remarkable final it has been Where does Boriana Kalin sit? Where does she finish? The 20 year old from Sofia. This might be one of those things where we see the score in the graphic before the fans actually see it because they're going to do that dramatic thing on the scoreboard where they show it going up and up and up and up. Oh, they are so nervous. What a final body Anna Kalin has given us. The reigning Bulgarian champion. She took three bronze medals at the European Championships in 2019 in Baku. Team ball and ribbon. It's going to keep us guessing right up until the very end. Absolutely, what a performance. Whatever the outcome. Some splendid gymnasts are not going to be on the podium. Sport is cruel. It's also a lot of fun, isn't it? They think so.
How much more of this can they take? Oh, this is such a weight. Well, there we're having the confirmation, not official yet, but Fanny Pignitsky becoming the first Hungarian rhythmic gymnast for more than 20 years. What an amazing performance from her, really the competition of her life. <laughs> yes. Everyone's clinging on, aren't they? We are on tenterhooks for Bodiana Kalein's score. They love their sport in this city. Hosted the World Championships in 1969 and 1987. It's the longest wait that we've uh, had for a score so far. This might be the most dramatic bit of the whole day and there's nothing going on. <laughs> Thought she just stepped away to order a pizza there for a moment. They're going to be there for some time. Do we have a number? I think we do. Has she managed to get onto the podium? It looks as though she has, but where? That's the question. Well, we know from that reaction. Oh, it's silver! Bodiana Kalin, the all around silver medalist. Dina Avarina drops down into the bronze medal position. What extraordinary drama at the conclusion of this competition. Katrin Tassiva absolutely ecstatic for her teammate. The gold medal goes to Arena Avarina. The silver medal to Bulgaria's Bodiana Kalin. And the bronze medal to Dina Avarina. Now that is what you call a moment of high drama to conclude this competition. Three tenths ahead of Dina Avarina in bronze. The Olympic Games are just around the corner. Boriana Kalin has just told the world that she is ready for the fight. So often there is conversation about three names, the Avarinas and Linoy Ashram. A fourth name has just been added and added emphatically to the discussion. Boriana Kalin, welcome to the conversation. Welcome to the podium.
the classified results in the individual all-around competition. The bronze medal to Dina Avarina of the Russian Federation, the silver to Boriana Kalin of Bulgaria, the gold to Arena Avarina of the Russian Federation. The second gold medal, if you will, is awarded to Fanny Pignitsky, the unofficial gold medal, the Olympic trophy, the qualification battle that she has won. What a performance from Fanny Pignitsky. The display of her life to secure a place at the Olympic Games. But on the subject of displays of your life, there, there it was. It's been coming. Her World Cup performances have told everyone that it's been coming. But that is something special. Well, that was all uneventful and calm, wasn't it? Fortunately, we've uh, got nothing dramatic at all to come in the afternoon, apart from the group all around final, which is going to be similarly spectacular. But in just a moment, the victory ceremony in the individual all-around competition. Do stay with us, please, for scenes of celebration in Varna. Every year, ladies and gentlemen, at the Olympic Gymnastics European Championships, our global partner, Smart Scoring, presents the Shooting Star Award. The trophy goes to a gymnast with an exceptional story or who is inspired inspiration for the future generation of gymnasts and the general public alike. And this year, the trophy goes to Lord Macedonia's Rachel Stoyanov. Rachel was born in the United States to a Macedonian mother and a Bulgarian father. She holds both passports, but she decided to compete for North Macedonia. Rachel Stoyanov well, we have now the presentation of the Shooting Star Award to Rachel Stoyanov of North Macedonia. <laughs> Having a look around to try and find the Stoyanov family. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, they were all expecting to go home. They've had to extend their stay in Varna. And what an impact she's had on the competition. She is North Macedonia's flagship gymnast. 
Severo Macedonia, Vasco Pudismenti, Reggio Stugliano. It's a very limited rhythmic gymnastics scene in North Macedonia, but it is growing exponentially due to Rachel Stoyanov. Still to come, we have the victory ceremony for the individual all-around competition. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for the victory ceremony for the all-around final individual seniors. The cadets of the National Naval Academy in Varna lead out the competitors and the medalists in the all-around competition at the European Championships of Rhythmic Gymnastics. The bronze medal to Dina Averina of the Russian Federation, the reigning world champion. Not since Maria Petrova and her triumph of 1994 have Bulgaria enjoyed success like this in the all-around competition at the European Championships. Boriana Kalein, the silver medalist. The title to Arena Averina once again. She was the European all-around champion in 2018. And she has added to her collection. Eight times a champion of Europe. She has only ever finished in top spot on the podium. And what does this do? What does this do ahead of the Olympic Games? It's Arena, who is 
the champion of Europe. And we now hear the national anthem of the Russian Federation. And there they are, the medalists in the individual all-around competition at the European Championships of Rhythmic Gymnastics. There is a new gymnast on the all-around podium. Just a month or so away from the biggest competition of them all. The European Championships has given us unbelievable drama and incredible sport. Well then, if you need to make yourself a cup of herbal tea, now's the time. Coming up next, we have got the group all around a final. That's going to start in just over an hour. So you have about an hour's gap until the competition continues in Varna. It's been a pleasure having you company so far today. Look forward to speaking to you again very shortly. <laughs>